today on Florida Sportsman Best Boat. If you want to cruise and fish with the family, we'll be taking a look at the Sundance DX22 HPX, a bay boat with an overall length of 21 feet 10 inches, a beam of 7 feet 10 inches, and max horsepower rating of 150. Standout features on the Sundance DX22 HPX. A large carrying capacity means you can comfortably bring along the whole family for a day of fun on the water. Multiple live wells give anglers the convenience of easy access to live bait from the bow and stern of the boat. Comfortable stern seating provides a safe place for passengers to sit when cruising around or just hanging out. If you're just stepping up into hardcore offshore angling, we'll be looking at the Contender 25T, a center console with an overall length of 25 feet 3 inches a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and max horsepower rating of 400. Standout features on the Contender 25T. A rugged hull design that features three-piece construction and an aggressive entry means rough water can be tamed with ease during offshore excursions. An open deck layout gives anglers an abundance of room to set out a spread and work hooked fish carefully around the boat. A functional console design leaves plenty of room for fishermen to walk by, keeps the helmsman dry, and provides ample space for electronics. For those who require the ultimate in blue water fishability, we'll be taking a look at the Sea Lion 3410cc, a center console with an overall length of 34 feet, a beam of 10 feet, and max horsepower rating of 1,050. Standout features on the Sea Lion 3410cc. Easy console access allows the captain to quickly and easily access vital systems components and gives passengers ample room to use the head. A large T-top not only provides plenty of shade, but increases fishability by allowing easy access to rods and helps to cut glare while underway. An oversized cockpit gives anglers a perfect area to spread out and fish with all the amenities they need, such as live wells, tackle centers, and fish boxes. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they conduct walkthroughs and review key features, all to help you decide if this is the best boat for you. Welcome to another episode of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. I'm George Labonte. And I'm Rick Riles. And you know, George, this week we got to visit with some old friends, some new friends, some boats nobody's ever seen, brand new to the marketplace. Absolutely. Today we look at the Sundance DX22 HPX, the Contender 25T, and the Sea Lion 3410cc. George, that Sundance DX22 HPX was a ticket to the water for a whole lot of people. You're right, Rick. That Sundance was not your typical bay utility boat. Now, you think of utility boats, you think of a bare bones boat, but that boat was dressed up a little more. Yeah, but I gotta tell you, I got to spend some time on that 25T contender. Ho, ho, ho. Of all the contenders, that one may be the most functional. It is a great boat to tournament fish from to do a lot of things with. No doubt, the 25T is a great entry into the contender tournament line. That boat will do it all, and it's the boat that started contender. It is, and a boat that's nobody's seen before. How about this? The Sea Lion 3410cc. That is a brand new boat with a lot of cool features. Right again, that Sea Lion 3410 is a new kid on the block, but that 34 by 10 profile of that boat really held up to the rough seas we fished it in. It's a great new boat. I think we're going to really see a lot more of this company. That Sea Lion's a good way to slap a boo marlin in the face and tell his mama that you stole his lunch money. That's what that's good for. You got it, buddy. Hey, let's get started with that Sundance. When we come back, hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles take a closer look at a boat built to provide fun for the whole family, the Sundance DX22 HPX. This segment brought to you by MyFWC. Life jackets save lives. Boating with family and friends is a great way to enjoy Florida's waterways. Hey, Mom, can I go sit up front? Yeah, just be careful. But even experienced boaters may not recognize all the risks of improper seating or standing locations. Okay, guys, hold on. Here we go. is dangerous. Passengers should only sit in designated seating areas while underway. Be aware and stay safe. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts George Labonte and Rick Riles as they take a closer look at the Sundance DX22 HPX. 
Representing the 17 to 24 foot class in the bay boat category, the Sundance DX22 HBX has an overall length of 21 feet 10 inches, a beam of 7 feet 10 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 150. Built for maximum versatility, she has a draft of 6 inches, a dry weight of 1,745 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 24 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. We're on the Sundance DX22 HPX. And you know, if we were investment bankers, we'd talk a whole lot about return on investment. Well, getting your family outdoors and together is certainly an investment. You know what? You get an awful good return if you invest in a boat like this. You can take 10 people on this boat. Absolutely. Rick, this is a utility boat. That's what I like to call them. But much more fancy than a utility boat that most people would think of. The first thing that you notice about this boat, of course, is the room. Ten people in this boat are not squinched for room at all. Plenty of room on the platform. You know I love that recessed casting platform. It's an absolute tank, Rick. Absolutely stability is unbelievable on this boat, and what room to walk around. Well, look at you and I. We're both standing on the same side of the boat. We're having Well, you don't weigh anything. You're right. We're, <laughs> thank you, George. We're having literally no effect on how she lays in the water. Her attitude is just the same. Rick, this is the kind of boat where you could load it up, take all your kids and their friends, get everybody on one side of the boat and put a bunch of shrimp out on a popping cork and have a ball. All right, let's take a look around because there's nice features to this boat that you need to see. Absolutely, let's have a look at it. George, we talked a lot about return on investment and getting your family out on the water on a budget, but there's something awfully nice about a liner, having a lined boat. This boat has got a great non-skid pattern on it. I mean, the gel coat is very nice. I mean, it's shiny and the whole boat, this is a boat to be proud of when you're riding around on it. It really is. This is one that you don't just hose and go. Oh, no. I like the diamond pattern. It's my favorite pattern in non-skid and this boat's got it and they used it well. But you've got all the storage in the world you'd want under nice there. Nice storage box, nice anchor locker up there also. Pre-wired for a trolling motor. Yep. You're not gonna have a boat like this and not want a trolling motor on it. Absolutely, and these seats won't seat a bunch of people right here, but they're very comfortable. And this area is a good place to sit around. If you're at the sandbar, just chilling out here, I mean, somebody's here, a few people there, kind of hanging around. This is a nice little area to lounge in. Well, you were the one that first mentioned the word utility when you talked about these boats, and this is a good example of it. You do an awful lot of things. George, let's take a look at this console. You gotta love having the live well here. Oh yeah. You gotta realize so many of your people fish up here, they don't wanna go all the way to the transom to get their bait. Good place for it. Not only is your bait here, but look where your tackle center is. That's probably the driest place on the boat if you think about it. Behind that cushion, absolutely. And unlike a lot of 22 foot center consoles, you got room for a multi-function display on this console. Let me give you another timely little tip too. If you're gonna jump in the water after the kids, Take your cell phone out and put it in your handy little drawer. Don't go. ask me how I know that. Rick, let's move into the back here. Let's not overlook this though before we do. This is a really roomy seat for a couple of people to stretch out here. Comfortable to drive from and a cooler underneath the seat. Yep, it, it, it's a good one. It's one of the new coolers that of course keeps ice so much longer. But let me tell you something. I've always been a big fan of this design that you turn around while you're trolling. Okay, and this, again, this is a boat then on a calm day, it wouldn't bother you a bit to troll the beach for Kings and Kobe and such as that. So you've really got to set up here to do it. But what great seats they put in the backpack here. Well, everybody knows it's the most comfortable place to sit. And this just took the most comfortable place one step further. Not only comfortable back here, but if you're fishing back here, you don't want to go all the way forward to get your bait. And easy bilge access under both of these seats. But don't miss this, this 115, you can run forever, okay? And this gets back to the return on investment discussion in the fact that you can take 10 people, 10 people okay, and push them around all day with a 115, stick a couple of gallons of gas in it, spend a few minutes washing it. This Sundance DX22 HPX gives you an excellent return on the money you invest in the entertainment and togetherness of your family. It's an all around good boat for what you want to do on the water. When we return, host George Labonte and Rick Riles step aboard a boat designed for the entry-level offshore tournament angler, the Contender 25T. This segment brought to you by Fishing Nasara, the best sport fishing in Costa Rica. Fishing Nasara, Costa Rica's best sport fishing. Bite the world's baddest fish with top quality boats, professional tackle, and family-friendly English-speaking captains. 
Stay in the authentic nature preserve with wildlife at your doorstep. World-class surfing, nature tours, yoga, and fine dining are all at your fingertips in Nosara. Packages start at $700 per person. Don't delay, book today. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our hosts Rick Riles and George Labonte as they check out the Contender 25T. Representing the 20 to 26 foot class in the center console category, the Contender 25T has an overall length of 25 feet 3 inches, a beam of 8 feet 6 inches, and a max horsepower rating of 400. Built to tame rough water, she has a draft of 18 inches, a dead rise of 24.5 degrees, a dry weight of 4,200 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 178 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. George, welcome aboard the Contender 25T. We've seen so many companies come and go since the explosion of center consoles. You know it's been a constant for the last 30 plus years. Absolutely, Contender. Yeah, these boats definitely have their own personality, Rick, and this one's got something really special going on for it. This is the entry size boat to get into their big boat construction. And that means a lot. It's the start of their three-piece construction. It's the start of their four-grid stringer system. Everything that they build on a 39, they put into this boat, like you would say, it just stayed in the oven a little too long. Absolutely. If you pop the deck off of this boat, it's going to look exactly the same as a 39. For the tournament guy, the guy that's real serious about fishing, this is the entry level size boat for that type of guy. This boat's got a bottom that's based on the original 25 Classic, the boat that really got everything started for Contender. Not a step hull, it's got this V bottom that everybody loves. We've seen it and loved it for years and it's on this boat just with a lot of technological advances since they started. Let's look at some of the reasons why this boat has stood the test of time and we can start right up here. Rick, this is a 25 foot boat, but it's set up exactly like the bigger boats here, this serious fishing configuration, and it's open up here. There's room for a couple of guys to work. You've got a giant fish box under your feet right here. You've got a drink box right there, big anchor locker right here. I mean, this is a perfect setup. George, you said a lot when you said room for guys to work. We've seen a lot of stuff that you can fish around, but if you've got a tournament crew or a very serious crew, what they want is room, and they want room to do what they do and who does that better than Contender? George, stop right where you are a minute. Take a look at this console from the front. You notice how much different it is in the old style? Absolutely, Rick. I remember they actually introduced this console at the Miami Boat Show and I loved it back then. It's a very racy looking profile. Totally retooled the thing. I love this round windshield too. I mean, the whole thing, it's just got a real sexy vibe. Look at your T-top legs. They don't go all the way down to the deck and take up that space. They tuck into the sides of the console. Sleek looking, I agree with you, but very, very functional. Yeah, and then bolting to the front of the console here, this little cutaway right here opens up a lot of shoulder space when you walk into the back of the boat. Let's go back there and take a look at the cockpit. Rick, the functionality of this style of this new console really extends back to here also. If you look at that rounded shape, this rounded stratoglass window here, it really breaks up the wind when you're running, and that really, it's like a windshield on a car looking at it. It's not square, hard lines, it's really streamlined break up that wind when you're running 40 miles an hour to get to the ground. You've got a great big dash panel to put, a, this one's got a huge single display on it. You've got plenty of room to put two displays if you want to. Fits in there nicely, all your instrumentation's right here. It's all packed into this space, Rick, but it's laid out really clean, just the way I like it. This is also a boat that's really set up for serious tournament fishing. Notice this rocket launcher leaning post. You know, this is the traditional style rod holders across the back, just lean up against it or sit on it, and storage underneath goes with the basics. It's really all you need and nothing you don't. George, speaking of this boat being a tournament boat, being hardcore, who does a live well system better than Contender? And it's in my favorite place, it's up on the transfer. Absolutely, I mean, everything you need, as I said, Definitely an advantage to putting that live well up in the transom. I like not having to bend over or get down on my hands and knees to get a bait, especially on a rough day offshore. Perfect spot for that. And a clean deck layout back here. You've got two storage boxes. You've got a great big access to your builds and your build systems right there. And just a real easy to fish in size cockpit. And there make no mistake about it. When they call it a tournament boat, part of it that it has to come into, of course, is the length and the beam. But how about the height? We mentioned it up in the bow. Back here, it's definitely a blue water freeboard. You understand what I mean by yeah. that? So George, the long and short of it is, this is a 25 foot tournament offshore boat. 
you can pull it with a 1500 truck, you can store it in a lot of places, you can afford to own it, and yet you can still be very serious offshore. Contender built this boat, but the original of this hull may well be the boat that built Contender. When we come back, host George Labonte and Rick Riles check out a boat engineered to fish comfortably among the Sportfish fleet, the Sea Lion 3410cc. This segment brought to you by Suzuki Marine, the ultimate four-stroke outboard. Welcome back to Florida Sportsman Best Boat. Join our host, George Labonte, as he meets with Rye Landry from Yamaha Outboards to discuss their new and improved 25 four-stroke in this week's power segment. I'm here today with Rye Landry from Yamaha. Rye, we're looking at the new 25 four-stroke from Yamaha. This engine comes in a bunch of different configurations. Why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Well, we actually offer this motor in actually eight different versions. Now, this one itself here is electric start only with power trim and tilt, which works perfect on a small little boat with a center helm like this. But if you have a smaller skiff or a small tender or something like that, maybe you need a tiller handle. We have that available. Additionally, you have 15 inch and 20 inch shafts lengths for different transoms. Now, one of the best things about this new motor is the fact that it has a batteryless EFI system, which means you can run the motor without a battery in the boat at all. You just need a fuel tank, pull starter, you're ready to go. Little boats like this, every pound counts on the boat, taking the weight of the battery out of the equation and the fact that the engine's lighter is a big win. Absolutely right. And in the base model of this motor, it weighs in at 126 pounds by far the lightest 25 horsepower on the market now. Well, as always, Rai, Yamaha's staying ahead of the curve, and this is a great little option for people with a little skiff like this. Sure is. Thanks a lot for having me, George. You bet. Now, let's check out the Sea Lion 3410cc. Representing the 31 to 53 foot class in the center console category, the Sea Lion 3410cc has an overall length of 34 feet, a beam of 10 feet, and a max horsepower rating of 1,050. Designed to tackle the offshore arena, she has a draft of 24 inches, a dead rise of 22.5 degrees, a dry weight of 8,500 pounds, and a fuel capacity of 300 gallons. Now, let's hear more from our hosts, George Labonte and Rick Riles. Rick, we're standing here on the 3410cc Sea Lion, a new boat to the market here. This is a really popular style of a boat. The size of this boat and the configuration of this boat is really popular and for good reason. Think about the absolutely massive footprint you can set out when your spread goes out on a boat like this. But they took a hull design that we all loved and actually made it better. They added a few feet to the back of it and made this boat into an incredible run and center console. Let's just say if you've been around a long time, if you see it, you'll know it you and will. you'll remember how much you loved it. There's a lot to do with it. I don't know if there's a magic number for dead rise on a boat, but 22 and a half degrees works great for this boat. Why don't we take a look around at some of the fishing features on the boat? What's really popular on the east coast of Florida now, and it's been for a few years and for many years, tuna fishing in the Bahamas. Now we've both fished over there for tunas, Rick, and we know how things happen fast, okay? You get underneath those birds, the fish come up busting. You hook four, five, you know, 60 pound yellow fins, you need to work fish around the boat. You can walk all around this boat. Now you've got five 60 pound tunas. Where do you put them? Here's an 840 quart box up in the deck right here. You could fit your limit of tunas a couple of times in this box. Yep, I'm telling you, George, think of the amount of difference it makes on your access and what you can store if you've got a front opening head like this. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of room down there. You can store things down there. There's a lot of room if you've got to use the head, but also you've got access to the back of your electronics panel and stuff, everything right there standing up. This is a tremendous amount of space. Oh, your battery switches. What a perfect place for them. Boy, George, I'll tell you one thing you don't give up if you step out of a 40-foot sport fisherman. You sure don't give up your electronics. Yeah, you know what? This is simplicity right here. You've got all the tools you'd have on that big boat. Two really big display screens. You've got your autopilot, all your controls for your motors sound system, radio, switching, everything's right here in this small space. You know what? This hard top, I like the Key West guide style top. It's big enough to give you shade back here, 
They cut it in there. You can put rods up and down both sides of the console to store, but it actually opens up your space when you're moving around through there too. If you've got to grab a rod real quick and run up to the bow, or if you're working those tunas around, like I said, plenty of room to work around this console. Really nice design. Well, that's it. These Key West tops make it so easy to grab a rod and go and get your cast where you need it. I love the shading. I like the color on the bottom of the top there. Really easy on the eyes really eats up a lot of the glare. I mean, this is just a smart design for running around doing serious fishing. All the way down to the handrails, okay? I don't know about you, but when I'm running over 50 miles an hour, I want the finger grips on these handrails and a solid thing to hold on to. Absolutely. Another thing, guys that are really hardcore fishermen don't necessarily want a bunch of creature comforts. This helm seating is a nice blend between really comfortable and practical. You've got two positions here for the driver and a passenger. You can use it standing or seated, lean up against here. It's got a nice little back pad for the back of your legs. I mean, it's comfortable, but it's not over the top and it doesn't take up a ton of room. George, there's one thing for sure. You don't give up anything in space back here. Yeah, you know, this is just the way the whole rest of the boat's laid out here. There's room to fish. You've got two more fish boxes back here. Two in the middle, that giant one in the front, two more you're not gonna run out of space to put fish. I like this open deck here. This is set up here in a seating arrangement for cruising. That seat cushion pops out. This backrest pops out of two rod holders out of the way when you're just fishing. You're not gonna have that. Underneath you, two live wells. You've got 50 gallons of live well underneath there. That's all you're ever gonna need for a day of fishing. We've also got a tackle center right here. You know, you've got more rod holders as though you needed more cup holders. Tackle center, cutting board. I like that you can fit your tackle trays in there and there's a rail to hold them in. Sliding track for a Yeti cooler right there, really nice. In here, you've got access to your through hull fittings. There's a pump box in there with your pumps for your live wells. Really roomy, tons of room to work in there to work on your ray cores are down there, everything in there. Plenty of room to get in there and work on it. George, in my opinion, the Sea Lion 3410cc fits into the genre of big center consoles very well. You're going to start seeing a lot more of them. They go fast, they're going to ride comfortable, and they're going to catch big fish. George, Sundance, Contender, Sea Lion. Tell you what, there was a lot of boats to look at today. Absolutely right. If you want to learn more about the boats you saw this week or any boats you've seen on Florida Sportsman Best Boat, go to floridasportsman.com. And we'll see you on next week's edition of Florida Sportsman Best Boat. When filming for Florida Sportsman Best Boat, the cast and crew docked and dined at Pirate's Cove Marina in Stewart, Florida. Family owned and operated, featuring 50 renovated rooms with an outstanding restaurant and a full service 50 slip marina.